according to God's ordinance and never forsake him so long as we both shall live. Stephen Mark, the wedding rings serve as the symbol of the vows you have just spoken. They are the outward and visible sign of an inward and invisible love which binds your hearts together. As they are of the finest of earth's materials, may your love be built on the richest spiritual values. As the rings are without seam or edge, having no beginning and no end, they symbolize the perfection of a love that in Christ cannot end. So Steve, as you take Mark's ring and place it on her finger. Would you repeat after me, please? I give you this ring as a symbol of my constant faithfulness and abiding love. And Mark, as you take it, As you take Steve's ring and place it on his finger, would you repeat after me, please? I give you this ring as a symbol of my constant faithfulness and abiding love. I always get to this point in a marriage ceremony. And I get to thinking, boy, this is just a half hour and it's almost gone. <laughs> but I also remember that you have accomplished an awful lot in this half hour, have you not? <laughs> and I'd like to think, too, that, that this half hour kind of represents the um, half a century or whatever that God has for you that's ahead of you yet together. Kind of the, the half and the half there. Sometimes thinking that, I feel like I should make a couple goofs, and maybe we should have a, a particularly difficult something happen, because I have a sense that that next half century is going to have a few things in it that do not go exactly right. And if we're going to represent one, then that, that would do it, but I trust that for the most part, this half hour will represent the smiles, the togetherness, the holding on to each other in God's presence that we're experiencing this half hour. I did not know yet what to say by Friday morning this week. It makes me kind of nervous. <laughs> Often if I've done three or four or five pre-marriage counseling sessions with a couple and, and known them for a while, I have something in my mind. It's just there and it's kind of ready to go. But I don't know. I've been talking with Steve for five and a half years since you helped us move from Las Vegas. And we've done a fair amount of talking over that time. In fact, I think I might have talked with you just as much as almost anybody here, Steve. And I had the feeling that that's not going to happen as often in the future. <laughs> <laughs> and rightly so. Now, I've just gotten to know Lark. But I've discovered also, and Steve would, I think, verify, that Lark is not exactly a wallflower bashful kind of person. <laughs> and I've gotten to know her just in the short time, and it's been a blessing too. So I thought it best to just have God say a few words to us. When we were doing our sessions together over the last couple months, we looked at a lot of scripture texts. Uh, some were from Hebrews, let marriage be held in honor among all. There was one that I think we reference, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. There's a text that says, love one another as I have loved you, certainly referring to marriage. And even in the form, there were a number of scripture texts, including 1 Corinthians 13, that in Christ, by personal faith, these things are enabled by God and blessings that he intends. All good texts. And yet, the one yesterday that would not leave my mind was the very original one from Genesis. God's creation intent. And it says this, a man shall leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and they shall be one, some versions they shall become one flesh. The thing I want you to remember today is that it says that in that chapter as a as a creation event. 
I don't, I don't know that I've thought about it a lot that way before. One, one commentator said it's almost in that creation context, it's maybe trying to get at almost like a parent and child, I mean, as far as it being permanent, absolute, that united, you know, parent and child, that's parent and child. There's nothing they can do or change. It's a, it's a fact of life. It's the way God worked it. And the sense of it there in Genesis is very much the same. This is what God intended, fixed creation, an action, unbreakable, undeniable, done by God. When I was a kid growing up, I, I don't remember a lot of it anymore, but I, I think that a lot of cars used to say on them, body by fishing. Did they not, John? I had to get a car thing here for Steve. <laughs> just, just had to do that. And I don't know if they still do. Somewhere on the door panel or something, you could look down there and it'd say Body by Fisher. And it just reminds me, Steve and Lark, this says marriage by God. Right here and now. To get at that, for us sometimes weak humans, some of the commentators or some of the translators have translated that verse to say, Man shall leave his father and mother and cling to his wife. And the two shall be one. Kind of trying to get at that intensity, that commitment, that never letting go kind of absolute that God intends. So Stephen Mark, done by God. Stephen Mark, when you have those occasional disagreements, once in a great while, those louder than normal discussions, perhaps. Don't ever use the word divorce or anything like that because this is done by God. Stephen Lark, when you have stress times and, and the brain has some weird thoughts,